Hey guys, so the waterfall renovation for the turtle bond has been completed. I wanted to give you an overview and uh, talk about the project a little bit. Um, as you can see, I removed some of these uh, panels. These are just these four panels on top just to give me access to the waterfall. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, we have here a 50 gallon tub. This is the Rubbermaid tub. Um, let's take a closer look. So we have basically the water coming in from the filters. The filters are around the house and they go under the dirt over here. There's like a two foot pipe, PVC pipe buried. And then it comes up here and goes out here. I had to extend it a little bit because now the waterfall is farther away from the wall. Um, so I had to extend it a little bit. Um, I put this 45 degree um, on the end aiming up so that the water kind of has more of a splash, a little bit more of a, uh, you know, that, uh, what do they call it? They, like a blade kind of a look. Um, and as you can see, it's causing a lot of aeration. So I'm really happy with that. So the water comes in to the top of this barrel. And then over here, that's a two inch pipe. And that the coming out is a one and a half inch pipe. And I use one and a half inches because I had a line around. <laughs> so basically, these are essentially the same thing. We have two electrical conduit male and female threaded adapters going in and out. So that's the female, that side is the male. Um, and then I have uh, PL roofing and flashing sealant in between that. I, I set up another video so I can show you that process in more details. Um, in general, I've used that for all my filters. I'm really happy with it. It creates a nice watertight seal for very cheap. I know people like using um, the uniseals or buy bulkhead fittings, but for me, um, that works really well. I found that on a forum and I like it a lot. So basically, this is a T fitting. Um, the pipe goes to about an inch off the floor. So the water comes up from the bottom into the T-fitting and then goes out here. Um, and they're both exactly like that. You can see the water is going out the side. The top of the T-fitting is slightly lower than the lip of this bin. So if the bottom ends up getting clogged with roots or debris or something like that, it'll overflow from the bottom and then go in from the top. Now on the end here, I have two pipes going all the way in with again these 45s. Um, I like the 45s because they give a bigger splash with more bubbles. Without them, it's a little bit less, but you can see, you know, the first thing that you'll notice is the aeration of this pond is amazing. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. I have a, of a couple inches drop over there, and then this is maybe is like, maybe eight or nine inches. Well, with the 45s, maybe it ends up being closer to a foot. But um, yeah, a lot of aeration. I'm really happy with the bubbles here before. The pumps are the same. So the only real difference now is just an elevation drop, um, which is really nice. Now. Let's talk about some of the things, some of the decisions that went in here. So first of all, this T fitting, I didn't, I could have used just like a 90, which would skim across the top, but I specifically didn't want to skim across the top because I wanted to be able to have plants here undisturbed. And I felt that if I had a 90 that was skimming off the top, kind of like a skimmer, um, it would affect, uh, it would negatively affect the ability for the plants to kind of grow undisturbed. Like uh, it would get clogged with the roots would go in and the floating plants wouldn't be able to survive. Um, as far as plants, um, I'm not putting any rocks in the bottom of this barrel at all. Some people, you see filters where they take a bin and they fill it up with like sand, gravel, rocks is like a sand gravel filter. That's a mistake if you can't easily clean it out. When people have sand gravel filters that they use air to clean it out, um, it works much nicer. But I don't want to fill this up with rocks. One of the problems that I had was the old waterfall was filled with so much rocks and it's just a place to trap debris and algae and rotting material. And when I took the rocks out, it smelled like a sewer. It was so anaerobic. You know, there's no way for the oxygen to get underneath the rocks. So the bacteria that are growing there is anaerobic, really unhealthy, not a fan. But I do have these planters with rocks in the planters. So I do have rocks inside the planters, but not just in the basin itself. And the reason for that is for these plants to get a chance to root inside, um, to get their roots attached to those rocks. As far as plants, I went to a grocery store and I got some watercress, which I've used in the past, but hasn't really been so successful. One of the one of the advantages of having this tub is the turtles can access it, right? It's, uh, I don't know how tall it is, maybe like 15 inches, maybe a little two feet or less. But um, before in the old waterfall, the turtles could climb in and turtles just absolutely destroy plants. We have like four red-eared sliders in here. And I tried parrot's feather, I tried watercress. They eat everything, they rip everything, they climb on everything. So this is really like an isolated tub where we can have other kinds of plants. So I have these two watercresses, which I'm really excited about. They like the fast moving water, so I put them next to the waterfall. And then here I went to a pond supply store and I got arrowhead. 
and parrot's feather. You can already see the parrot's feather starting to, to climb up. Um, and then over here, I have a pothos plant. Um, so I'm hoping that will kind of like trail over the side. And I put just a little stock of mint. I don't know how that's gonna do and a little bit of water lettuce. We're here in Southern California, but we are approaching the winter. So I didn't wanna to go too crazy with plants when I have no idea how well these things are gonna survive the winter. It doesn't freeze, it doesn't get frost, but it gets pretty chilly. I know the water lettuce and the hyacinth usually usually don't make it over the winter. Um, we usually have to rebuy it again every year. We don't store it inside. But um, yeah, so I'm really excited about it. So one thing, one, uh, one thing I wanna address is when you look at a, a, a tub like this, you know, probably the first thought that's gonna to come to your mind is that it looks a lot less natural, right? Before it was when there were rocks, there was grass, and I will concede to that point. It definitely does look less natural, but really what I had to discuss here was my priorities. For my case, I wasn't necessarily prioritizing a natural look as, you know, the aesthetics as much as I was the functionality, the maintenance, and, um, and the health of the system. So right now, because of these two elevation drops, I'm getting so much aeration in here. And aeration is super important. Every single biological process, whether it's plants, fish, turtles, algae, all of it needs oxygen in order to in order to thrive. And now I'm getting a lot more aeration than I was before, which I'm really happy about. So introducing more oxygen to the pond. And this isolated system is gonna enable me to grow plants. So back in the, in the, in the old waterfall, I wasn't able to grow plants. I mean, there was a bunch of grass in there, but that was about it. So, um, I'm hopefully going to be able to utilize some of the vertical space to grow different kinds of plants um, that can hopefully do a lot better. And the plants take up nutrients. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there's a lot of plant matter and algae at the bottom of the pond. Um, with turtles, there is a lot of inputs into the pond, right? Turtles create a lot of waste. They eat a lot of food. But yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of inputs going in. As you can see, um, we, ha we put in like 10 mosquito fish a couple years ago, I don't know how well you can see the video, but now we probably have like hundreds. So with all this inputs coming in, it's creating a lot of excess nutrients, which generates a lot of algae. So hopefully with the, with this plants, with the with having more plants, being able to uptake those nutrients, it's gonna create a lot healthier, healthier of the pond. And also maintenance, you know, um, the old waterfall was very hard to deal with. It was, uh, there was water leaking out, there was grass growing in, um, like here, I built up the edge of the pond a little bit. I removed the huge grass balls that were over there. Um, so I think it's gonna be a lot easier to maintain. You know, this tub is not screwed into anything. It's not connected to anything. It's easy to replace. Um, it's easy to clean. And uh, yeah, I think over time, um, I hope that the plants will grow along the edge. I'm not sure what we're gonna do with this corner and behind it. Uh, we'll find uh, something to put there, maybe to plant there, but um, yeah, overall, I'm really happy with it. If I had just a you know, just a fish pond, it wouldn't be necessary, unless you have really big or really aggressive fish. Um, the fish can coexist with the plants pretty easily. You put some in a pot, you put some on the shelf, and it's fine. But if I want to have other types of plants in a turtle pond, which I think is very necessary because of how much inputs there are um, and how much waste is accumulated, uh, then I think having a lot of extra plants is very necessary. And having them isolated from the turtles, from the red-eared sliders, I think to be very important. So overall, I'm really happy with how this worked out. Um, getting rid of the older waterfall was probably the hardest part. There was so much rocks. I used pond foam, you know, the spray foam when I did it, which was a, a pain to remove. But yeah, so one thing I wanted to say is if, if I could build this whole pond again from scratch, if I was doing it again, I would probably would love to go with a 75 or 100 gallon tub. But I think this works really well because it fits nicely under this, uh, this cage this uh, turtle safe cage and um, I think that's really valuable because it gives me a lot more extra vertical space to grow plants um, and the last thing I was gonna say just one more point about the health of the system at the end of the day the purpose of this pond is really more a turtle habitat than it is like a landscaping piece you know like we have four turtles um, we care about them a lot we want them to be healthy so um, if I had more time or was, uh, I was here for longer Maybe I could have done it in a more natural looking way that has this elevation drop, but I was on a short time frame and short budget. And um, I don't really live here anymore, so it's hard for me to put in a lot of work onto it. I had to do something in a very short amount of time. And I think that this uh, aeration and plants is gonna be really good for the health of the system, the health of the turtles. Anyways, that's the update. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I will check you later. Bye.